Good afternoon and welcome to NTV News. I am Siksha Sharma. Let's take a look into the headlines first. President Gordon returns home, wrapping up his week-long visit to Switzerland and Germany. Visit taken as a tool in renewing bilateral ties with the European nations. Landslide of Strasbourg Gurney Road along the Mid Hill Highway floods, landslides, and lightning takes eight lives in Koshi Province. Houses inundated in Java. Russian President Putin welcomed in North Korea for his first visit in 24 years. Vows to support the North against the United States. And Portugal Nets injury time winner against Czech Republic as Ronaldo makes history becoming the first player to feature in six editions of the World Cup. NTV News, we take a look into other updates uh, in the home front where President Ram Chandra Paudin has returned home, wrapping up his week-long visit to Switzerland and Germany. The President was welcomed at the VVIP lounge of Trivuvan International Airport this morning. Vice President Ram Sahar Prashad Yadav, Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal, ministers among others, welcomed the President upon his arrival. On the occasion, Nepal Army offered a gun salute to, in honor of the President. The President's recent visit to Switzerland and Federal Republic of Germany are expected to be instrumental in further consolidating and renewing Nepal's bilateral ties with these European nations. The President returned home this morning, wrapping up his a week-long visit to the Switzerland and Germany. The President was uh, accorded a welcome by Vice President Ram Sahai Prashad Yadav, Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal, government ministers and other high-level dignitaries upon arrival at the VVIP lounge of the Trivivan International Airport. The meeting of the House of Representatives under the federal parliament continues today as well. The meeting has been uh, the meet various topics of the Ministry of Youth and Sports is scheduled to be discussed under the Appropriation Bill 2081. Also, the concerned minister will answer questions raised during discussion on various topics of their ministry under the Appropriation Bill 2081 in the meeting. A police personnel has committed suicide by shooting himself on the premises of the Federal Parliament building in New Baneshwar, Kathmandu. Kathmandu Police Chief Basanta Razauri said the body of Police Constable Ajit Gouri was found in the toilet at 8 a.m. Today he was on duty at the Parliament building. Police Constable Gouri shot himself in the forehead with his service rifle. The details of the incident are yet to be received. Let's take a look into a short break. More news follows up on the other side. Just stay with us. Welcome back to NTV News towards the other update where severe heat has taken life of a person in Dhankari. 53 year old Balram Magrati of Dhankari Sub Metropolitan City 16 died in at the hospital following the incident. A spokesperson of the district police office, Kailali Kabindra Singh Bohra, said Magrati fainted due to excessive heat and was taken to Sethi Provincial Hospital for treatment where he breathed his last. Meanwhile, Dhangadi Submetropolitan City has announced closure of schools in the city for three more days owing to extreme temperatures there. Landslides have blocked at least three places of the Kurkut Gurmi Road section along the Mid Hill Highway. Landslides since early morning have obstructed roads in Golanzo Rural Municipality 6 near Haibar Besi, Akkarebir, Golanzor, and Fikkal Rural Municipality to Sumanam Besi. Superintendent of Police and Chief of District Police Office Sinduli Govindaraz Gafli said a truck has been buried under the mud. Dozens of vehicles and passengers have been stranded owing to the landslide that took place in, uh, towards the east from Kurgot. Efforts are underway to clear the road. 
Monsoonal clouds is currently hovering across the skies of Koshi province, bringing it much anticipated rainfall and in its districts. However, sluggish movement of monsoon is affecting the regular pattern of rain in other parts of the country. The weather forecast division of the Department of Hydrology and Meteorology estimates that it will take over a week for it to move across the nation. Currently, Koshi province's eastern and northeastern region are where the monsoon is concentrated. Every district in Koshi province where the monsoon has moved in is seeing rain. The monsoon system now has the influence in the eastern part of the country, while the local wind and the low pressure area developed around Bihar of India has influenced in the rest of the country. That was the update from uh, the heavy rainfall predicted as uh, by the Meteorological Forecasting Division in the Koshi province. Meanwhile, the monsoon-induced disasters are already causing difficulty in various places. At least eight people have lost their lives in Koshi province due to floods, landslides and lightning. Five people died in Taplejung and two in Sangkwa Sava due to floods and landslides, while one died of lightning in Morang, as said the Koshi provincial police office. Elsewhere in Jhapa, seven families have been displaced and more than a dozen houses inundated owing to incessant rain since the past two days. Families of four households of Kanchan Kabul Ruler Municipality Ward No. 5, Kutta Ganj, have been displaced, while four families of Jhapa Ruler Municipality Ward No. 6, Yuvatol, were also uh, forced out of their homes after floods inundated their settlements. Few other families have been shifted to safer areas. Let's take a look into other highlights of what's coming up next. Russia's President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un inspect Guard of Honor at a welcome ceremony in Pyongyang. It is Putin's first trip to North Korea since 2000 and comes as Western countries accuse him, accuse Kim of supplying arms to historic ally Russia for its use in Ukraine. Putin vows to deepen trade and security ties with a reclusive nuclear armed state and to support it against the United States. Putin's plane touched down in Pyongyang around 2.45 a.m. local time following a stopover in Russia's Far East. The U.S. and its Asian allies are trying to work out just how far Russia will go in support of the North Korean leader, whose country is the only one to have conducted the nuclear weapon test in 21st century. In a signal that Russia, a veto-wielding member of the U.N. Security Council, is reassessing its entire approach to North, Putin praised Pyongyang ahead of his arrival for resisting what he said was U.S. economic pressure blackmail and threats. Boeing's chief executive Dave Calhoun faced a grilling from U.S. senators about the company's culture as he apologized to family members of plane crash victims who shouted at him throughout the hearing. Calhoun testified on Tuesday to Congress that the company had learned from past mistakes and that the process for employee whistleblowers works but lawmakers still accuse him of not doing enough to rectify a culture of retaliation. The U.S. company most recently was put in the spotlight when a drawer panel fell off a new 737 MAX plane during an Alaska Airlines flight in January, leaving a gaping hole. As part of an ongoing investigation, Boeing whistleblowers told the Senate in April that the 737 MAX the 787 Dreamliner and the 777 models had serious production issues. Priyanka Gandhi, sister of India's main opposition Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, is set to contest her first election, ending decades of anticipation by her supporters. Gandhi is a descendant of the Nehru Gandhi family, India's most famous political dynasty, and her electoral debut will be closely watched. The by-election will mark the end of a decades-long wait by Congress supporters for Gandhi's involvement in electoral politics. The 52-year-old will contest the Wayanad seat in the southern Indian state of Kerala after her brother relinquishes it. A win for her would mean the presence of all three Gandhi family members in the Indian parliament. Her mother, Sonia Gandhi, former president of the Congress party, is an MP in the Rajya Sabha, the upper house of the Indian parliament. Her brother, Ga Rahul Gandhi, won the recent parliamentary elections from both Wayanad and Uttar Pradesh's Raibareli seats. Let's take a look into other highlights of what's coming up next.
More people are turning away from news, describing it as depressing, relentless and boring, a global study suggests. Almost 4 in 10, that is 39% people worldwide said they sometimes or often actively avoid the news compared with 29% in 2017, according to the report by Oxford University's Reuters Institute. Wars in Ukraine and the Middle East may have contributed to people's desire to switch off the news, the report's author said. It is said that news avoidance is now at record high levels. People across 47 countries were surveyed by the YouGov in January and February for this year's digital news report. Taking you to London now, the rare Arum Titan shows off its rare flower at the Kew Gardens, London, a spectacle expected to and last another two to three days. The species is the most fragrant flower in the world, says the gardens, which explains why the Arum Titan is nicknamed the Cope's flower with the strong odor it gives off to attract pollinators. The flower can grow up to three meters tall and seeing it in bloom is rare. As Kew Gardens points out, it can take up to 12 years for a plant to gather enough energy to produce its first flower and subsequently bloom occur every few years. Time now for sports update. Francesco Consecao scored a late winner as Portugal fought back from a goal down to beat Czech Republic 2-1 in the Euro 2024 opener in Leipzig. Roberto Martinez's side are one of the tournament favourites after winning every game during qualifying, but they left it late to see off their dogged opponents. The Czech Republic had spent much of the game defending in their own half, but stunned Portugal when Lucas Provost's whipped second half strike flew into the far corner. But the hopes of victory were dashed soon after goalkeeper Jinrit Stanek parred Nuno Mendes' header and the ball bounced off Robin Harnack and into the back of his own net. The goal ensured Portugal captain Cristiano Ronaldo marked his appearance at a record sixth European Championship with a memorable win. In other mass teenager Arda Giller scored on his European Championship debut as Turkey broke Georgia's heart with the thrilling Group F victory in Dortmund. Right-back Mert Muldur gave Turkey the lead in the 25th minute with an outrageous volley into the top corner, leaving Georgia goalkeeper no chance. Georgia, also playing as a Euro for the, in the Euro for the first time, fought valiantly and almost snatched a leveller. That were the updates from the sports front. We take a look into headlines as a reminder of the top stories. President Porter returned home, wrapping up his week-long visit to Switzerland and Germany, visit taken as a tool in renewing bilateral ties with the European nations. Landslide obstructs Kirkwood Gurney Road along the Midian Highway, floods, landslides and lightning takes eight lives in Koshi province, houses inundated in Java. Russian President Putin welcomed in North Korea for his first visit in 24 years, vows to support North against the United States. And Portugal nets injury time winner against Czech Republic as Ronaldo makes history becoming the first player to feature in six editions of Europe. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Have a great day ahead and namaste.